So just when I thought I was finished testing Clipper solutions, I was contacted by Big Tree Tech once again to test out another one of their newest Pi alternatives to hit the market. This is the Big Tree Tech BTT Pi, and it is another Big Tree Tech product built on the reliable CB1 architecture. This board is essentially a CB1 and Pi 4B adapter integrated into a single solution. Much like the CB1 and Pi 4B pairing, it's running the same all winner H616 processor, has 1 gigabyte of RAM, four USB type A ports, a 100 megabit ethernet port, a 40 pin GPIO section, and a dedicated five volt source for running a cooling fan. There's also a CAN bus interface, a dedicated ADXL port, an infrared receiver, an SPI ribbon cable socket for a TFT35 SPI display, a micro HDMI port to run an HDMI5, HDMI7, or similar display, a USB type C port for debugging of the unit, and an audio port. Ooh. There's also a power input that supports 12 or 24 volt power, much like the MKS Pi, but with standard screw type terminals instead of a JST XH connector, which most people only have if they're building printers or tinkering constantly. Inside of the box, we have the BTT Pi, a Wi Fi antenna, a cable for connecting an ADXL 345 accelerometer, a little thank you card, one of the quintessential rubber duckies a heat sink so you don't have to purchase a separate one like you would with the CB1, and a Big Tree Tech sticker. This board is currently priced at around $34, which is roughly $10 cheaper than the CB1 and Pi 4B if you factor in the additional heat sink. I'm going to be setting this up on my Elegoo Neptune 3 that is currently running the Pi 4B and CB1 combo, but more on that later. Because this is basically a CB1, I should just be able to swap out the micro SD card from one unit to the other and just be done with it. But what good would that be for video content? So thank you again, Big Tree Tech and BQ, for sending me this unit to test out. And with that, let's get into it. So if we go to the Big Tree Tech GitHub page and we go to the BTT Pi section, we can see right here we have 3D models that we can download for the BTT Pi if we wanted to build an enclosure or add it to an existing machine build or something like that. There's the user manual. And there's also a board fan pin configuration page that is worth looking at because this will explain how to set up the cooling fan to turn on and off with temperature readings. If we look down at the bottom under the 40 pin GPIO section we can see that it says BTT Pi and CB1 40 pin GPIO are different. Please refer here for details. I would not refer here. I would refer to the user manual because the user manual is a little clearer. In the user manual, we can find the page for the 40 pin GPIO section and we can compare all of the different pin configurations for the BTT Pi versus the CB1 with EMMC versus the CB1 versus the Raspberry Pi CM4. The ones that I usually worry about the most are pins 6, 8, and 10 because those are the ground send and receive for UART and I like to run my machines on UART pins. So those are the three pins that I would care most about, but we could see that there are a couple of differences as far as the pin designations and what have you. So keep an eye on this if you use the GPIO section for more than just UART send and receive. It also shows you how to use the ADXL345 socket and connect it to the Big Tree Tech flavor of the ADXL345. So there's a lot of information inside of this manual. When we want to burn the image, we could see right here at the very bottom of the GitHub page that the usage and configuration of the operating system image is exactly the same as CB1 normal version. Again, which means that I should be able to take out the SD card from my CB1, put it into the BTT Pi, power it up, and it should be okay. So if we go to the CB1 GitHub page, we can find the latest system image under OS image. It's the V2.3.2 version. Now keep in mind that there are different versions of the CB1 Linux that you can download. You can download the version with Clipper and you can download a minimal version that doesn't have Clipper installed. It's basically just a Linux distro. You could also download the source code if you wanted to rip into it and compile your own version. But for sake of simplicity, we will download the CB1 Debian 11 Clipper kernel 5.16 image file. Right here, we could see that in the parentheses, there's a one, which means that the image that I have is the latest one. So I will just stop that. 
so it doesn't download another duplicate version of the same file. I'll go to my Raspberry Pi imager. I'll go to choose operating system, go down to the bottom, use custom. I'll find the CB1 Debian 11 Clipper Kernel 5.16 image file that I have. Hit open, choose my storage. Here I've got the eight gig card that came with one of my Neptune printers already in my SD slot. So I'll pick that, hit right. Okay, so that should be it. I'll just hit continue, remove, and then reinsert the SD card. And then inside of the board ENV, so a couple things to take note of inside of this file. If you want to use UART communication rather than using a USB port, you would come down to this console equals and where it says display, change that to serial. And then looking at my printer CFG for my Neptune 3, I saved that from the CB1 prior to disconnecting it. Coming down to my second MCU section right here, I've got MCU CB1 underscore Pi 4B running SPI bus SPI dev 1.2. And that means that the ADXL 345 is being driven from the SPI DEV 1.2. And inside of board ENV, you can see at the bottom here, we've got a bunch of different SPI DEV overlays that we can uncomment to make active. I'm not exactly sure what the dedicated ADXL pins are on the BTT Pi. I'm assuming they're 1.2. If they're not 1.2, then we'll have to look through the manual and see if we could find out what SPI DEV they're running off of. But my assumption is they're 1.2. And in order to get my board to run without having to comment out my printer.cfg would be to activate this overlay. So I'm going to activate the overlay, change my console to serial because I'm using the UART pins on my BTT Pi going into my printer. The last thing we're going to want to do before we put the SD card into the BTT Pi is open up the system.cfg file. And we have to double check a couple of things before moving forward because my machine is set up for portrait mode, so I have to rotate my display. And the Wi Fi stuff is not set up yet. So I could put the Wi Fi information in, and then when I power up the board, it'll connect automatically instead of going through Clipper screen and having to set it up there. So I'll open this up with Notepad. And a couple of things to take note of here is that if we come down to hostname and we uncomment that, we can change the hostname from BTT-CB1 to whatever we want. In this case, we'll call it BTT Pi. I'll come down to the keystone angle here, KS angle, uncomment that. And I want to do a right rotation on that to rotate it to the right 90 degrees. And if the screen were upside down, I can do... 90 degrees to the left, or if I had access to the flip-flop button on the display, I can just hit that button and it would flip it automatically for me. Under the Wi-Fi name and password, you put in your SSID and your password. In my case, I'm going to put in my Wi-Fi information, and then I will put the SD card into the Pi, and it's all ready to power up. I'll just go through the connections real quick, and we will power it up together. Okay, so I've got everything set up, ready to go. I've got 24 volt coming from the printer's motherboard via a JSTXH connection with this wire here going to this JST, which was originally used to power my MKS Pi, but both of those have seen an untimely demise. You'll notice that there's a jumper right here, and that jumper sits right next to the USB-C port. You want to take that out whenever you have 24 volts going into here, and that prevents backflowing current through the USB port into your computer if you have this plugged in for debugging purposes. I had thought that this was a power and debugging port per what I was told, but I put 5 volts to this and the display was not happy at all, so that's not the correct information. I've got the micro HDMI plugged into here, and I've got a USB type A going here into the HDMI 5, which is connected via a USB-C. And um, yeah. And then here I've got the UART pins. You'll see I've got ground, and TX, and RX going into pins 6, 8, and 10. The red and yellow pins are pins 1 and 2 per the diagram. So we should be ready to go. I'll put the SD card into the slot. I've got the Wi-Fi antenna connected on the bottom of the board here. 
And uh, let's see how she do. Okay, so I've got signs of life already on the screen. The Big Tree Tech logo always comes in in a landscape view, but I do have the board set up for portrait mode. And now that we've got some signs of life on the screen, I can go into WinSCP, start a new session, and I'm going to log into the BTT-Pi with the username of BQ and the password of BQ because those are the default settings. Notice that I'm calling up hostname BTT Pi because that's what we gave it as the host name in the config file. Hit login. So under the printer underscore data folder, I'll go to config. And then we have a printer.cfg, which is proper because there is a default printer.cfg, but it doesn't have any kind of pertinent information. It's just a dummy CFG. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my printer.cfg from my desktop over here from my CB1. And let's drag this over into here, and it'll say, do you wish to overwrite? I'll say yes. It'll overwrite the file. And then from there, we should be able to refresh the firmware, and everything should come right up. Okay, there it is. It took a couple of seconds, but it found the printer. It connected via the UART, and everything is happy hunky-dory. I'll just home it out real quick. It's usually the number one test, but because I'm using the printer CFG from the original CB1, there shouldn't be any issues. It's a uh, it's a one-to-one -one conversion from one board to another. So yeah, so that's it. It was very painless. It was pretty much the exact same as the CB1. It was the exact same as the Pad 7. I think we got ourselves a winner here. So my takeaways regarding the BTT Pi are that because it's based on the CB1 architecture which is being used currently in the Manta boards, used with the Pi 4B adapter, and comes standard installed on the Pad 7 from the factory. It is a proven technology, and I haven't had any kind of MCU shutdown issues with my CB1 or with the Pad 7, unlike the MakerBase MKS Pis that I was using for a while. After a couple of months of use, they started experiencing frequent MCU shutdowns and have found their way into my bin of unused devices. So that being said, I would avoid anything with an RK3328 processor for the foreseeable future, only because of chronic MCU shutdowns. Until they get the kernel issues or whatever resolved, I would shy away from those as much as I can. The fact that the board itself has built-in Wi-Fi is very convenient, but keep in mind that it's only 2.4G, and if you wanted to run 5G, you'd have to get a USB dongle to run that. And because it's based on a Debian architecture, you have to make sure you get a USB dongle that would be compatible with a Debian distro. I do like the fact that it has a separate CAN, ADXL, and fan pins rather than just tapping into the 40-pin GPIO section. The GPIO section is very convenient. It does have the UART capabilities, and it does have the capabilities of any other Pi-type device. But having the other pin separate just makes for a little bit better housekeeping. The one thing that I did notice is that the pins and all of the HDMI ports and what have you are basically on the wrong side of the board for standard cases to be used. So if you had a case for a Raspberry Pi 4, let's say, that you downloaded from Thingiverse or Printables, you would have to rework that case in order to have it work with the BTT Pi as opposed to the Pi 4B adapter, which for all intents and purposes is compatible with a Raspberry Pi 4 case, besides a couple little quirky things like the Wi-Fi pigtail and the dedicated fan port on the Pi 4B adapter. I would like to see this changed in a future revision, but I don't know if they're going to retool the entire BTT Pi just because of that. It's probably easier and quicker to just rework one of the available cases online. And the 12 and 24 volt input allows for a more convenient power option. You don't have to use a buck converter to dumb it down to 5 volts like you would with a Raspberry Pi. But the fact that it didn't work on the USB-C connection kind of took me by surprise. I do like the fact that the 24 volt header has screw terminals rather than a JST-XH connection. Again, comparing it to the MKS Pi, which uses a JST connection, that I had to actually buy an entire crimp set to make two cables. But one of the benefits to that is the fact that you did see my 
Neptune 2 covered in duckies. And <laughs> let's just say that there's something coming up in the near future that you might want to hang around for. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like the video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. And if you know anybody who would be interested in seeing this video, share it with your friends because sharing is caring. Check out my affiliate links in the description below for the BTT Pie and other Big Tree Tech products at no additional cost to you. They just put a little bit of catnip into my kitty and help support my channel efforts. If you haven't yet, join my Facebook group. Elegoo Neptune Series 3D Printers Mods, Tweaks, and Improvements, where we have 24-hour live chats, offer remote support, and do the occasional giveaway with our channel partners. And thank you to my catnip contributors, both past, present, and future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.